door slides open into the bridge, which is, as expected, devoid of life and fully intact and looks like operational. Huh. Well, that's definitely a thing. The fact that this ship is... For it to be in such a condition, like, S-3PO was programmed to awaken at this moment four years ago, so... Uh, we may... Uh, since uh, he was uh, supposed to supervise something medical, we might want to check there at least uh, as well. Since we're on the bridge, uh, anyway, I can check on, uh, like, the uh, navigator's astrogation area. Sure. See where the ship's been. Okay, that's fine. Or how it jumped here, at least. Like, last location. Alright. Uh, difficulty 3 purple. Computer check. S3PO's not going to be a help, so... Nah, not a He's not an astromech droid. I, I'm, just, I'm trying to use him. Just rubbing him on everything like an adventure game. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I, I uh, love that analogy so much. Well, anyways, the astrogation charts are full and intact, and they're quite extensive. This thing was doing a... Well, it was what the astrogator was calling a victory lap, a victory lap in the mid-rim five years ago, and had was in around four years ago had made a jump from a mid-rim world Ethor to a a uh, core word world called Rendili, and there is no indication after that of where it jumped or how it got here. Uh. It seems like, according to the astrogation logs, it actually never made it to Rendili. Just uh, somehow got pulled out over here. Maybe someone really, really screwed up the astrogation. Victory lap, huh? Uh, and then, like, Ragjar looks I over at Lana... Stuff. If anything of particular noteworthiness happened four or five years ago that would warrant a victory lap? Currently trying to rack my brain and coming up with nothing. Nah, it was really... Um, there was, it's nothing in particular that's, like, galactically worthy. It's probably just... I so don't remember any major events five years prior to roughly where we're at. Okay. I mean, the rebellion had start, been, started, been going on for a while then. I don't think that's yeah, close like, for a victory. <laughs> like, like, like the emperor rebellion. had taken his seat of power like 17 years before that even. Yeah. Don't worry. I, don't, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's when they first started building the first Death Star. No, right. Nothing of historical significance. Uh, you do get the ship's name as well. Oh boy, what are we? It is the, is the ISD Banefire. ISD Tryhard. Bane fire. I like it. It's continuing mission. To blow up shit. To boldly fail at everything it does. <laughs> <laughs> to oh. activate a protocol droid four years into the future. Alright, well that gives us at least some semblance of where this ship was and the fact that the crew, at least, was still here at such a time ago, around the time S-3PO was scheduled. Speaking of maintenance. crew, mm -hmm. maybe we should try to find those logs. Looking for, like, administrator and captain's logs and shit like that? Yeah. Alright. That'll be a difficulty for computers check, because this is a captain's computer or something, I don't know. You can do it, Chris. <laughs> You might want to use one of the density points we have on this. Probably use one of those. This is important. I'm spending a point. Okay. Holy shit. I was told that you were spending a point. <laughs> that adds a uh, green, doesn't it? If, I you, can't, if you can't yeah. upgrade, it adds a green. Okay. Well, uh, Captain's Chair probably had uh, someone on the ship install better security. Star Destroyers like to protect things, I guess. Oh, yeah. Huh? <laughs> Apparently it protected nothing. It tried. Right. Information, the information you glean from the information you glean from the captain's compare and captain's law indicates the captain's logs were keeping relatively 
active logging every day or so up until up until the point that they made that jump from Ithor to Rendili. Then the logs just stop. No apocalyptic logs. No logs are saying of engine failure. No logs saying of issues. Just stop. Other information you glean from it, you indicate that the ship's complement of escape pods are all still on, are all still here and in their bays. Well, then. They never left here. Uh, but there's no... Uh, well, I mean, they didn't leave here through the escape pods. They obviously didn't leave here through the TIE fighters or anything else. Um, unless they had, like, a bunch of troop transports in well, how, how many TIE fighters were in there? Dozens. A lot. Like a full accoutrement, I would assume. Any indication of, or any sort of clarification on what the victory lap was for in the captain's log, Lissa? Uh, I actually don't know that. Uh, do you know? Uh, God, I guess. Hmm. It, see, it, seems, it seems that the ship had just gotten done with fighting a campaign against some against some outer rim pirates that made an incursion in the mid rim. So they were fighting pirates because, you know, pirates are a constant threat to the you know, not center of the world. I suppose any excuse to have a celebration. Hey, you know, when you're a, when a giant star destroyer, I guess there's reasons to be happy. So, the problem being between Ethor and Dilly, do you think the ship systems would have any information on either of those planets? I don't think I know of them. Well, Rendili's the home planet to my former employers, that's all I can really tell you personally, but, uh... Oh. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, Ethor I, I don't go back Ethor's there. the home of the Ethorians. Let's... Uh, Ethorians... Those are the... <laughs> <laughs> Rector like rolls his eyes up. Ah, <laughs> they're. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, I'm trying trying to think of an example. They're they're like the hammerhead people. Yeah, I'm the eyes. All box. right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Rector looks as if he totally yeah, understands. There, there you go. There's there's a picture of him. Okay. Eesh. Nature loving to a fault. Them's some pretty space, gill slits. They're space hippies. <laughs> ah, those. Those. I, I, yeah, okay, I got it. <laughs> I've seen them before, yeah. <laughs> Just didn't I think there's one in, in the Moss Isley Cantina. Yeah, I think so. I honestly think you drank one under the table back at Cloud City, too. Uh, you know. <laughs> Maybe you did that. <laughs> <laughs> we were at Cloud City? <laughs> when was this? It was sometime I must have been ago. drunk for that. <laughs> sometime around the Jewel of Yavin being stolen. Do you hear about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we were out of there by then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had nothing to do with it, I swear. Uh-huh. Why do we keep getting random payments? <laughs> Beats me. I'm okay with it. Never. No, this st stop money. calling this number. <laughs> <laughs> God, quit leaving money here. Jesus. She, All she, right. But, but, but seriously. All right. So, Ethor to Rendili. Uh, Rendili is the home world of like a corporation. We start. Okay. And and Ethor is just like a home world of the Ethorians, which might just. have. Like, I don't know how significant they are, but I know they're not human, so it can't be that significant to the Empire. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> basically, for basically what you would also glean from the computers is that they were only in Ethor for maybe a week. Okay. Getting supplies from the planet. Nurse. Yeah. That's about it. So that tells us what they were doing. We don't know exactly how the Star Destroyer ended up in the Deep Core in a ship graveyard. Like, uh, trying to remember how the galactic map looks. I don't think Ethor to Rendili, like, connects through this location at all, does it? No, nothing connects through here. Like, nobody travels through the Deep Core, really. I mean, even, I mean, even if you were to do a straight line from Rendili to Ethor, it would not take you anywhere near the Deep Core. Yeah, that's, that's why all the trade routes go around it. Something must have gone real wrong in either their astrogation or just in, in transit. Huh. All right. 
Well, that tells us how they got here. I don't know whether we need to know why they left. I'm sure the ship is perfectly fine. Just look at it. <laughs> look at it. The doors, you know, cut open by something, and the cut in half ship, and the missing corpses. Hey, they can still be alive. So like, uh, yeah, yeah, look, yeah, yeah, there's no sign of death. These looking, could all looking be alive. at the map, <laughs> like even if they had gone straight from Ethor to Rendili, they wouldn't even go in. They wouldn't even be aimed towards the deep core. So the, somebody fucked up. All right. Well, or or it was hijacked or something. Well, there certainly have been a lot of eerie moments in our time together. This is just another one of those. Let's not think too much into it. Uh, can you use the sensor? To, well, I don't know whether you should. Maybe get a better idea of what's all in this graveyard here from the bridge? Are there internal sensors? Yes and yes. Oh. I didn't even think oh, I mean, that's amazing. First thing. I'm <laughs> sure that there's not uh, a Rakshar says uh, thing living or mechanical <laughs> beings heading towards the bridge to do horrible things to us. Okay. What are you trying that's, to do again? Uh, an internal scan for anything like okay. move other than us. Okay, difficulty two, purple. <laughs> nice. You tell, you do, you, the internal scans indicate that there is movement, but it doesn't seem to be focused in any one area, and it does not seem to be coming towards you at all. Any way I can, uh, if there's like a camera in the area where the movement is, could check that if it's around. Sure. Basically, basically what your camera indicates is it's maintenance droids, like those tiny little droids you saw on the Death Star and stuff like that, and astromech droids just going about their business keeping the ship running. Whoa, whoa, oh. what, what did courier droids have to do on an empty ship? I don't know. What, I didn't know what they were courier droids. Yeah, the little whiny mouse droid. Yeah, whatever. It's obviously ferreting hollow vids between the droids. <laughs> all of the, <laughs> so all of the maintenance droids are still active, although I am curious as to why none of the damage we've seen has been... Re like, why hasn't it been repaired if the maintenance droids are still active? Well... They're not Based on what we've seen of maintenance droids, I'm not surprised. <laughs> I think I saw a couple of them bump into each other on the camera. Uh, well, no organics other than us, Lissa? None, none no that you can see. Yeah, huh. Whatever happened here, uh, maybe they got jettisoned into space? Maybe. All at once? Maybe not at once. Maybe, uh... For the course of four years? You know, <laughs> like mass people, suicide? Droid rebellion? Red, I don't know. Red Shore Blinks were like, how many people could this ship fit? Uh, uh minimum... Thousands. Cr minimum crew, minimum crew for a Victory Class Star Destroyer is 1,750. I can't imagine every single one of them having been jettisoned out into space without any signs of... But they all just get chucked out of the hangar bay? I can't imagine them not putting up a fight. Average that, size. That doesn't, that doesn't include the couple thousand stormtroopers that would be on here with yeah, them. Yeah, this thing, these things can be somewhere up to seven to 8,000 people when it's full. Right. And, and this ship, unless the maintenance droids have done an impeccable job, shows no external signs of wear or tear. I'm just gonna... Well, there's something, something yeah. obviously stampeded through that hangar bay. And then also jumped out of the canal. Yeah. Maybe it was an incredibly rare and dangerous animal that the Imperials foolishly brought onto the vessel, and rather than face its gory tusks, they all chose to jump out into space without using the escape pods. Yeah, I got nothing. Like a Wookiee? Wookiees don't have tusks. Oh, that's true. You don't know that. They what might you have tusks. Although, <laughs> although this thing over here looks like a body. That's just the background. Wait, what? Oh, that. 
So I thought you were talking about something like in the bridge. I mean, in the background, this ship's fucking ripped in half, so... <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's also, what, a CR-90 Corvette. Uh, at any rate, uh, how about we just... Computer card next? Medical yeah. bay armory? Whichever one's what are, what are we looking to get from this ship? The ship? We could use the entire ship, and for that, we could have Lissa go down the engineering. We'll all go there, and if the ship is perfectly intact, then, well, the rebels wanted a vessel. How, uh, question to you, Jordan. Mm -hmm. For something that has a minimum crew of about 1,800, <laughs> let's assume 10% of that is for piloting and enge engineering. It'd be pretty What different. kind of roles would we be looking at? <laughs> Uh, Alyssa, would it, you would be making some actual hardcore rules to it. I mean, the thing is, well, the thing is, once the thing is in hyperspace, you really don't have to touch anything. So getting it there will be hard. But once you're there, just don't touch anything, and hope it doesn't blow up. Yes, yes. So we just steer it to the rendezvous location. Then we get on the Jack's Revenge that's on the ship. And then we jump back to the deep core. <laughs> See, I would, I would actually think we get it all aligned and everything, and then set the computer to activate the hyperdrive in like ten minutes, and then we go and leave. Okay. And then just let it autopilot there. Okay. Ten minutes. That's uh, you're not accounting for horrible spooks happening. Because apparently, the last time this thing entered hyperspace, all organics on board disappeared. <laughs> you know that is a very compelling point. If we can automate that fucking jump. I am all for that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let me let me, let me look at my handy dandy uh, cross section of an imp of a victory class star destroyer. Okay. Is it a one or a two? It's a one. Two is model shitty thing. Yeah. Anyways, from where you are now, the quickest place would be engine. Would be engine control. Okay. Would be engineering, which is basically directly down from where you are. All right. Let's go check engineering then, so that Lissa can verify that everything's intact. Maybe we can look at that computer core thing or whatever to get like a compilation of the log. Maybe that contains some information that the commander's journal doesn't. What's your match? Okay. Taking that, taking that turbo lift ride. S three P S. S3PO is like, oh, heavens me. What is an S3PO? This ship is really big. Yes, S3PO. A star destroyer. Quite vast. Should you be multiple thousands of people here. You could lose yourself in a ship of this <laughs> size, S3PO. Oh, dear. Better stick close. Oh, God. Jay makes a sort of laughing sound. <laughs> Anyways, the door's open to engineering, and there is... You can see movement. There's a few astromech droids, a few ma a few minor maintenance droids who are all doing minor things, making sure that the systems are running, checking checking the cables, working on the engine, so like that. Nothing too fancy. Let's... Lissa, uh, I don't suppose by chance, once you check all these things, that can these droids be repurposed into guiding this vessel towards a jump point or whatever? The astromech's likely. Okay. Couldn't, couldn't we just set everything up and then just tell the 3PO to stand there and press this button in 10 minutes? Do you know anything about 3PO's? Does that 3 people understand what minutes really I've are? I've seen the inside of one pretty often in recent days. <laughs> uh, no, no, you haven't. There's all kinds are, are of stuff in here. Are you kidding? you know how many times you've been disassembled on this There's show? all <laughs> kinds of stuff in here. It is a running <laughs> joke for viewers on YouTube how you've consistently fallen unconscious. <laughs> it's really true. But, um, no, really, uh, you don't know how their verbal brains work. They, uh, they just see you as a gay activist, and they're trying to shut it down. <clears throat> Rambo as fuck. Anyways, uh, anyways, none of, the, none, of the droid, none of the droids turn to look at you for turn away from the tasks as if program, as if dog, 
doggedly holding to their programming to do their job. Well, get to it. Let's start doing whatever techno... Uh, Who's a what's it? Yes. I'll wiggle my hands at everything and see how it works out. Sure. <laughs> Fucking sorcerer. <laughs> Anyways, what are you gonna do? You gonna go to X? You actually gonna go to engineering? You're gonna go to the computer core? They're both really close to each other, so it's I'd not... first like to make sure that everything's working and then check out the core. All right, that'll be you're going to engineering. All right, okay. Since it was right below us, yeah. So that'd be a difficulty three P. That'll be hmm. we're making a mechanics check this time. You've been doing a lot of computers checks. All right, difficulty three. Mm-hmm. And I just nudge one of those little uh, courier bots out of the way. Alright. From a mechanical point of view, everything looks to be in tip top shape. Not the only way the only way the only way everything in here could be better is if it were stripped out and basically retrofitted back up to, you know, factory standard. The only way this could be better is if it was not in the center of the deep core. Basically. Right. So the the mechanics are fine, but perhaps there's something wrong with the hyperdrive or whatever, courtesy of the fact that the ship is located in a ship graveyard in the deep core instead of going to Rindilly? We might want to check the hyperdrive, but I swear if it is coated in corpses, I'm going to be mad with you. Uh, coated in corp? <laughs> the hyperdrive, the hyperdrive for these things is actually quite large. And but powered. I repeat, there are well, were thousands of people here. It could be coated in corpses, for all you know. And it's not coated in corpses, because it's right over there. <sighs> Engineering is vast. Uh, it's got catwalks most everything. of the lower decks. <laughs> maybe, maybe after we get out of here, Lissa, you, you should have a drink or four. Teen. Yeah. Yeah. Implying she hasn't been drinking the whole time? Yes. I've, I've only had one. Mm, 12. 140. How, how big was that one? <laughs> one big one. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. She drinks in gallons. <laughs> Whole gallons. Anyways, uh, just, you actually, I don't know if you actually want to go check out the hyperdrive, but just a cursory glance at it, it looks like everything is working and functional. Nothing looks like it's on fire, sputtering, lightning coming off of it. No lost souls pumping out of the sides. No. Alright, well, if this has the Lissa Vox seal of approval, who am I to challenge that? No, no uh, giant sphere with concentric rings spinning around it or anything? No. Tar. Sure. Everything looks good to go. Alright, um, let's check the computer core to see if there's anything uh, messed up there. Alright. Uh, computer core, you just want a dump, or do you want to do a narrow search on stuff? I want to first search for um, the time that they would have been in uh, hyperspace for that jump. All right. Anything I can find about that period of time. Okay, would specific things like that. We'll make that a difficulty for purple check. And we'll make this a little bit more... We'll make this a little fun. Uh-oh. Let me see here. I don't know whether I like fun. I mean, I am playing a tabletop game. Yeah, that definitely. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna spend. That definitely suggests to me that you don't like fun. Unless, unless, unless you're gonna spend a destiny point, I'm gonna spend a destiny point. I'd ask the group, but I think it's more important to save that destiny point for getting the fuck out of here. I don't have a preference. All right, upgrade one of those purple to a red. Three mm, purples, delicious red. red. Mm -hmm. Let's get some despair. I think you already are feeling despair. I don't think we need any dice to say despair. <laughs> what an awful thing to say. <laughs> Let's get some despair. In. Let's oh. get some despair. Yeah, anti-despair. How the hell do you, how the hell do you do it when you get threat, but you get a but you get a a life? <laughs> I am the worst at everything. To triumph. Well, cr cr critical success, but with repercussions. It's like anti friends with benefits. I don't know. All right. <laughs> anyways, 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 you find you find a bunch of automated internal ship's logs uh, from about the time that indicate that, in that indicates a few things. Nothing out of the, nothing, nothing stood out of the order except for one, where there is a report of a 
increase increase in gravity, increase in something pulling on gravity, but the ships, the ships, the ships, auto navigation, basically astrogation brain. Report, report, reports to the reports to the internal schematics that it is that it has it has righted itself and the thing's back on course. Righted itself, huh? Mm-hmm. So it's back on course to dumping them in the middle of the deep core. According to the according to the astrogation brain, it was on course for Rendilly, but that's just that's just that's just what the information logs tell you. There was just an incre- there was just a massive increase in gravity, but it wasn't powerful enough to pull them out of the uh, hyperspace. Oh, it was just powerful enough to uh, you know throw them way off course. Perhaps. And I guess also rip all the organics off of the ship. Nothing in there. Nothing in there about that at all. Mm. Internal ship. Internal ship. Internal ships logs at the time. Do you want to uh, do another like you know, yank everything out of there? But I want to check out the uh, the astrogation brain then. All right. That uh, that's you can do that from here because it's it's part of the internal ships logs and something like that. You can do a Just, lot. Of, you can do a lot of ship from the computer core. Oh yeah, I, I would assume as much. So, where do you want to do a check out that if it's in good working order and stuff like that? Yeah, I'm just uh, now a computer. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, we'll make that a difficulty two purple. That's a computer's check. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, checking the checking the thing. It is. Its verbo brain is working within within reasonable specs. There are a few. There are a few artifacts. Some I don't know. They were like a few irregularities in the programming, but nothing that would suggest that it's not working. Basically, it, it, it's gaining a personality, like all droids do. Uh huh. So it's gaining a murderous personality because the only droid I've got real experience with getting a personality is Jay, mm. and there's a whole lot of murder there. Yeah, no, that definitely sounds like droids. You know, a murderous personality could explain how suddenly everyone vanished, right? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Hyperspace sure. is weird. Yeah, if I was a ship, <laughs> people would definitely disappear. A bounty hunter who takes the form of a Star Destroyer. <laughs> sure. All right. Anyways, uh, anyways, you want to do that mass data dump? Yeah. yeah right. uh, we'll just we'll just say we'll just say you have a data pad that somehow has enough has enough space to pull. Pour this onto a portable little. Uh, so S3. many MacGuffin bites. See, S3PO, come over here. What? what? No! <laughs> Download it all into his brain. There you go. Or something like that. Uh, we'll make this a difficulty one purple. I will fail this. I'm just calling that right now. No, you're good. Uh, I'm amazed. Everything, everything is downloaded into the data pad or S3PO or whatever device you wish to download it in mm-hmm. quickly and efficiently. Congratulations on being wrong, Chris. I know. I, I, it's a great feeling sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you have basically since you basically have external sensor logs, internal sensor logs, which are kept, which are basically done twice a day, every twelve hours, going back four, five, six, seven years, along Didn't with you- along with other logs, astrogation astrogation logs, scans of different things. Can you check the external and internal sensor logs for around the time period? Since we know which date they made the jump to Rendille, can you like check those sensor logs to see when all the organics suddenly went poof? I'd like to try and let's see if I can find the right data slate I put that garbage on. Alright, since you got a triumph earlier, I'm going to give you two boost die on this check, which will be three purple. But since you got the triumph earlier, this is basic. It's helping out a little bit. Get those two boost on that three purple. Mm-hmm. Computer's check. You're basically cross referencing items. Oh. Yeah. It's basically it basically occurred somewhere halfway halfway between Ethor and Rendili, which also seemingly coincides with the with that one event with that gravitic the, gra- the gravitonic event. The for the first in the day's uh, sensor logs from out from in the internal ship indicate that the crew was here and all the way there, and after that, there is no there, there is nothing in the logs at all about any crew whatsoever. Great. As if as 
Although, although there is something, uh, there is something that is tugging at you as you do this. Something that looks like these tugging. Like there's something in the back of your head. These data logs are too. I don't know what it is. Clean. Clinical. Yeah. Perhaps. Yep. Like a medical drawing. Not what I was going for, but sure. J- j- just you know, uh, I suppose the uh, a a idiom would be real boats rock. They're so like tidy and punctual and perfectly expressed that it leads to indicate that they might have been doctored to you. Probably, I like mean, a medical given, droid. <laughs> given the amount of time that this ship has been sitting here and how verbo brains work, I'm probably being lied to. 